<laughs> no, no! <laughs> hey, fine people. I am in Houston. I had, whoa. I'm filming in my car. I haven't filmed a lot lately. I just left my friend's house. Uh, my friend Erin, we've been friends forever, and her husband Adam and her two kids, Peyton and Emma. And uh, they, I stayed with them for like four days, and then I did my show, I did my talk for the Vegan Society of Peace. She was amazing host. They were amazing hosts. Uh, I was really sad to leave. My show happened last night here in Houston at the Rec Room. Um, it was great. It was sold out, and um, yeah, it was hard to do it in a new city and to put it all together and organizing this tour. I don't want to be all complaining, but it's way more work than I thought, and uh, it's hard. <laughs> but I'm having fun, and I'm in this car. Um, I got an upgrade at the place because they didn't have the compact card. I, I'm renting this car for like seven weeks. And uh, they didn't have a compact car, and they're like, oh, you get an upgrade. So I'm in this super nice car that's great, and I, my whole show is in the trunk. And I have this table now that I use on stage I bought at Costco, and I'm on tour. Uh, last night, I sold a ton of merch. I almost left my merch at home. I was like, ah, I don't want to. And I, something told me, like, throw it in a bag. I've sold almost all of it, so I'm going to figure out a way to order some more T-shirts so I can have them in L.A. Hopefully, I can get them there in time. And uh, I'm headed now to the uh, Chicken Rescue in Alvin, Texas. Uh, so next stop, we'll be there. And it, this is my first video from the tour, although the tour, I guess, started a couple days ago. It's just very, it's, it was very overwhelming to worry, like, I wanted to be filming. I was worried about getting the show together. I needed to get the car together. And it was the day I rented the car, was it was, it was fine, but it was very... The person that rented me the car was not great. I need to add, and I should say this in every video, a well-fed world, um, a wellfedworld.org, or I think it's wellfedworld.org, whatever it is, I'll put a link over there uh, so you can check them out. They, they uh, are helping fund this tour, and I wouldn't be able to rent this car were it not for them. So thank you, a well-fed world. Check out all the work that they do. Uh, I, I should, I really need to do a podcast or something with someone from there. Um, just to share about what's happening. So I'm headed to Chicken Rescue and I'll see you there. everywhere to speak up for the animals who cannot speak for themselves and disrupt a place that normalizes violence against them. Excuse me everyone, can I please have your attention for just a brief moment? Today we are here to speak out for those whose bodies are dismembered and broken behind me to be served as food. These bodies once belonged to sentient, feeling animals who could feel love, joy, pain, and happiness, just like the animals in your own homes. Unfortunately, these animals are victims of speciesism. The idea that the chicken on your plate is any different than the cat that sits in your lap at home. It is not our fault for being desensitized to this violence, but it is our responsibility to choose compassion once we know the truth. And the truth is, it's not food. It's violent. It's not I grew up 
eating meat. I didn't come to the realization that eating meat is morally and ethically wrong until about four years ago. that's going on with Chick-fil-A, how they slaughter one animal just to show appreciation for another one, which makes absolutely no sense. And so since we're all here and we're dedicated and we have time, we're gonna go to another location so we can spread the message there. What sort of appreciation is this? What sort of appreciation is this? Where you justify the slaughter of one animal just to consume the dead flesh of another? Do you think that these cows wanted to die? chicken suppliers who supply their chickens to Chick-fil-A. And what happens to the animals, it's beyond anything that most people inside of that Chick-fil-A can imagine. And if they knew what was happening, they would be horrified. So we, we really are sorry if we set anybody off. Thank you. I'd like to shake your hand. That's all I wanted was an apology. Thank you. Have stuff to work thank on. You. I definitely see something I need to improve on. So thank you, and Sarah. And workers in the slaughterhouse, how they take your PTSD. PTSD. That was a great input as well. Yeah, it was. Getting violent and, and greeting people with hate, it's not gonna get us anywhere. Right. If we respond to people with love, not only does it lower their defenses, because we're like, hey, we're not here to start a fight. We're not here to start a war. We want to work with you. We're here with a compassionate, peaceful message. Let's talk. And not only does it lower their defenses, it makes us look better as activists. It really does. Compassion never fails. <laughs>
in the car with Tiffany. We have a, uh, oh, I haven't even said who this is. Hi, <laughs> Tiffany with the Chicken Rescue. And uh, we have a sick chicken, it's Heidi. She's in the um, carrier back there. We're headed to the vet to see um, if we can find out what's wrong. The thing that's most um, impressive, I don't know if that's the right word, it was just pretty amazing that this morning, uh, to me, Heidi was just walking around, but Tiffany could notice immediately that something was up and that or she wasn't being herself. Got any, any comment on that? Like yeah. what you saw? So when I went in there this morning, um, normally she's she's very flighty. So um, she's she's always you know the first one to run away from me, even if I have treats, or she she's running or she's jumping on, on something. So when we went in there this morning, she was just kind of sitting um, in the corner. So at first I thought that was odd, but you know, I'm like, okay, well, we'll, we'll see. So I put Boo down and, and she didn't move. Um, so then I tried to catch her and I was able to catch her, uh, which is very surprising because she's very, very flighty and, and she doesn't like to be held, she doesn't like to be touched. Um, so she'll pretty much do anything she can to get away from someone. Uh, she just doesn't really like to be cuddled. So I was able to get her and I picked her up and, and she was just, she just seemed lethargic. Um, so I put her down, watched her for a little while, and then I put her with her favorite rooster to see if that would liven her up at all. Um, normally it does, and she she just didn't want to have anything to do with him. And again, totally not normal. Um, so then I brought her into a different part of the yard, put her down, watched her for a little bit, and then she went in the corner and laid down. So all these things, again, her tail was kind of down, and she was hunched over, and her eyes looked heavy, like she was tired. So we recently lost one, and, and I think I'm, um, I think I'm paranoid. I'm, I don't want to lose her, and I want to catch whatever it is. I want to catch it quickly. Hopefully, just a bacterial infection. Um, they'll know that right away from doing a stool sample. Um, then they'll give antibiotics, and, and we'll come home, and she'll probably be in the house with us until she recovers. Uh, but we'll see if it's if there's nothing. If they can't find bacteria, they may do blood work. Um, I don't think it's anything physical. I don't think it's a, a, a broken bone or anything. Um, I, I think she just doesn't feel good. So, and you can I can just tell. I know them so well just by seeing them every day and watching them. If any any one of them acts differently in the slightest bit, um, I I really um, I, I can really tell that something's wrong. One hour later. So, um, but the good news is that she, what, what she has is treatable at this point. So, um, she has coccidia, which is bacteria, um, and she has two types of internal parasites. So, that unfortunately, parasites, um, the one of the parasites that she has is pretty serious. Uh, so, she'll be treated with um, a wormer for three days. Um, because she's mixed with the large flock, we're gonna end up treating everyone. So everyone will be on liquid warmer one day for three days. And she's going to get um, a liquid antibiotic um, for a few days. And then when she goes back out with the flock, then they'll also be treated with the antibiotic. And that will be for the coccidia. Since she has it, there's a good chance they have it too. So we're gonna treat everybody um, just in case. Um, he, he said that with the ascarides, uh, which is one of the internal parasites that he has seen, um, he's, he's seen birds um, die uh, without showing any symptoms or um, without being tested positive for, for this um, for this type of parasite. So uh, it's possible that that is what happened um, to Phoenix, who we lost um, a few days ago unexpectedly. So we're glad we took her in. Um, we'll get her on meds right away and hopefully she'll recover in no time. All right, we're in the kitchen at the chicken rescue. This is Todd, we haven't met yet. Hi. We met her before, Hi. Tiffany. Uh, so that's a ton of sausages that were just made, like you've done in this, like the half, last half hour or so? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And we're making chicken satay too. And they have about an hour to steam. And after they steam, we'll put them in the refrigerator for um, overnight, 
and then eat them, and they'll be just like a like a bratwurst. Oh, stuff. They're all vegan. Yeah, and we're making uh, macaroni, chicken and cheese. Ooh wee! And this chicken satay. We should give a shout out to these people. This guy, you, do you Sky guys know this guy, Sky? Yeah, this guy yes. Mafuka, a great yeah. guy. I have never heard of him. So it's all, he has two cookbooks and a third just came out, is that right? several cookbooks actually, we only own two of them. Yeah, the non-dairy evolution, this is great because you go in all sorts of non-dairy cheeses, block cheeses, cheese sauces, uh, and this is a, uh, it's called Seitan and Beyond, um, and it's just full of um, beef and chicken and pork analogs that are really, really, really tasty. Oh my god, I can't wait. Yeah. So I'll share, I'll share what's going on as we get each step happening. Yay. All right, so we, um, we mixed all the dry and blender ingredients together and it made this dough that you see here. And then what happens next? Does it get boiled next? It gets baked and then boiled. Well, since we're doing the satays, we're gonna wrap it around the sticks before we, before we bake it. Oh. All right, so these are all our chicken's satay, <laughs> or chicken satays. <laughs> and they go in the oven, next. Just like this, no liquid or anything. Just like this. And then they go in the, in the simmering, um, simmering broth. So these are out of the oven. They look so good. I like the way they browned. Yeah, and they're getting ready to go into the boiling water when they'll absorb the moisture, so they'll be nice and juicy. Nice. Uh, do they go in now? Should we put yeah, them in? They go in now. Yep. So I gotta put them in without either sticking myself or splattering myself with the hot liquid. Oh, it's shells and everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh my god, this is gonna be so good. <sighs> So I learned something making this video. This has been uh, my project while I drive from Alvin, Texas, uh, chicken rescue, which I just left and there was no sense of closure <laughs> to that video. And where I'm headed today, which is um, Planet Rehab, uh, it's near Los Angeles. The thing I learned is I should be finishing these videos every day. So while I'm at Planet Rehab, I hereby commit to making a video and posting it that night. Um, I got all this footage and now I have this whole unwieldy thing. That's a lot to sort through and it was daunting to get through. So I hope you enjoyed that video. It was extra long, uh, but it covered my whole week pretty much. Um, yeah, I'm learning and that's what this is about, right? I'm practicing getting through um, that discomfort that, you know, like I love watching vlogs and I love watching different videos on YouTube. Um, every day I'm on YouTube watching some videos. Um, and so it's this thing, uh, what's his name? The guy from This American Life, Ira Glass. He has a quote about uh, people who make stuff do it because they have good taste and they like things. But when you start doing it, you realize that your stuff is not good. <laughs> so that's that's what I'm sort of struggling with right now. You can tell that what you're making isn't good, but it's because you haven't learned how, or because I haven't learned how. Uh, so I can see what's wrong with it, but I'm gonna commit myself to putting this stuff up at the end of each day. So I'm gonna film whatever footage I have and just make it happen while I'm at Planet Rehab and edit it and post it that night. Done and done. I go there today, and so I guess that means tonight I'll be posting another video. Wow, oh God, that seems scary, but I think it's gonna be great. Thank you so much for watching. Um, at the end of this, there'll be a list of all the people who've supported this tour. Um, mo many are on Patreon, many donated one at a time. If your name isn't there, <laughs> Please tell me, I was so thorough, but it's a lot of names and I'm worried I forgot someone. So if I, if I missed your name, please tell me so I can make sure that you're listed there. The people who are supporting me, especially through Patreon with this monthly contribution, I, I can't even tell you how valuable that is. Even if you're just doing $1. Ah, it's great. So thank you, those of you who are supporting. Thank you for watching this. Uh, click like, subscribe. 
ding the little bell. When you look at my page next to the subscribe button, there's a little, a little bell. If you click that, you'll get an email every time I upload a video. This is a really fun project. Next Wednesday, Bootleg Theater, 7 p.m., Los Angeles. Please come. Please, please, please come. Um, let me know if you need more information. MichaelHeron.com is my website. I'm on all the social medias as Michael Heron. In the links below, you'll see uh, links to everything. So connect with me. Thank you. Thanks for watching this whole big chunk video. <laughs> Next ones will be nice and short. Oh, and of course, thank you to the, the chicken rescue. I had an amazing week. Really amazing people. Thank you, Tiffany and Todd, for housing me for a week. Um, it was fantastic. And girl, that macaroni and cheese with the vegan sausage in it, that was good. Like, I was sitting there eating it going, oh, this is good. I should have filmed us eating the macaroni and cheese. There's no ending to this video. It's driving me crazy. This is the ending. Talk to you soon. Psst.